George Bennett, CEO of Rainbow Rare Earths. Thank you for coming to Rapallo again. How are you finding the Italian Riviera? Beautiful as always, and very happy to be back here. Good. George, as you know, I'm Simon Cat from Arlington. Thank you for coming along. Um, I've got to ask you a question. Is Rainbow Rare Earths a miner or a chemical company? It's a very good question. And I would like to say that we're actually a chemical company because we are developing a chemical process to withdraw or remove rare earths out of chemical cracked stacks in Palabora being the phosphogypsum stacks that we have as our resource. We originally started as a mining company with a small project in, in Kakara and Burundi, but we've changed now. Effectively, I think we can call ourselves a chemical processing company. And is your, so your chemical processing, I understand that you've just finished a pilot study on Palabora and you've got a feasibility study coming next year. Where are you in terms of perfecting that chemical process and producing commercial quantities of neodymium and praseodymium? Yeah. So our pilot plants have been running very successfully. Our initial pilot plant run was in Mintec in South Africa in Johannesburg, right. which um, is a, a well-known R&D um, mining research uh, center. And we've developed a front-end flow sheet which successfully produced mixed rare earth carbonate on a large scale pilot. Our pilot was treating 20 kilograms an hour of feed. Mm. Most mineral pilot plants run at about 2 to 3 kilograms an hour. So we were 6 to 10 times larger. And I wanted that to prove our process beyond any reasonable doubt. Right. And then our final stage is the separation into separated neodymium, praseodymium, terbium and, um, and dysprosium. We've been running that in Florida with some RP out of America using continuous ion exchange and continuous ion chromatography, which is established um, processes but used in a different application. In other words, specifically for targeting the rares out of phosphogypsum the way we're doing it. And that, um, that pilot plant in Florida has successfully achieved 96 to 97 percent purity of NDPR and we're now going to optimize that to 99 to 99.5% purity. We can sell 96, 97% purity material. We, we just suffer a slight discount, and purity discount like other minerals do. But it's our intention is to take that to the 99, 99.5% purity. I've just announced that last week that we're going to move that final stage back in pilot plant, now back to South Africa, and we'll optimize that final stage in South Africa with our own team. Gotcha. George, when I look at Rainbow, one thing that strikes me is the quality of your strategic partners. Can you talk about what people like Mosaic and OCP and TechMet see in Rainbow? What do they see you as and why are they there? Well, I think we've been able to prove that we are able to extract rares from phosphogypsum. Right. And uh, we've done that successfully, as I say, in the pilot plants we've been running. And with that, we're able to approach Mosaic and say we've got a you know you've got a massive phosphogypsum uh, stockpile in Brazil with uh, fresh feed coming onto the stack every every day and they've, they've got a 40 year life of that fresh feed and basically I said you know it's a wasted opportunity and they saw in Rainbow is that they could do it themselves but it would take them maybe five or six years of development whereas with us we've done it already we've, we, we've done those hard yards and so they see us as a shortcut to, to the partner with the proven technology and to get into the market a lot quicker. And that's why we've been able to attract the likes of Mosaic, a global um, you know, chemical company. OCP in Morocco, that's a slightly further down the line um, opportunity because the, the rares and the phosphogypsum is very, very low grade. Right. So we've got to look at if there's a way to upgrade that first before we look at extracting it. Otherwise, it will never be economic. And, and as I say, as we've been proving our technology and announcing our positive results to the market, we've now been approached by a very good opportunity in Canada, a very good opportunity in, um, in India, also in the phosphogypsum space, also to extract rare earths. So we are looking to be building a franchise which will be a global franchise, nice. which I think is important. And the market hasn't given us that credit yet, but it'll come in due course. I've got no doubt about that. Well, yeah, so, as I understand it, George, you've created the technology for extracting valuable rare earths yeah. from phosphogypsum, and now you can roll that out wherever there's phosphate gypsum in the world. Correct. Right. Yeah. Um, the and, these, and these opportunities are coming to us. We're not approaching them. They're approaching Rainbow. And are we yet at the point of the technology development where you know what your operating costs will be on a commercial basis, and how would they compare to the Chinese juggernaut in rare earths? That's very key, and uh, we, our PA we did, which we released in October 22, 
our CapEx numbers and our OPEX numbers we were very confident on. And in fact, we've been doing an update to ahead of our final DFS in, in November on those numbers. But basically, we're very confident with the team, the background the team has in, in ex-mining engineering businesses ourselves, that we know our OPEX number is a pretty good number. And that is sitting at about 33 spot 86 dollars per kilogram to separate near Denim, Preston Denim, Dysprosium and Terbium. Right. Now that we believe is below the cost of the Chinese and the Chinese are sitting at around about $40 a kilogram. And, and the current spot price is 60 or 70, yeah? Yeah, current spot price is 60 or 70, that's okay. correct. So we've run our PA model and even at current prices we'd be profitable, but the main reason for that is because we don't have all the costs normally associated with a normal earth mining project. We've got no mining cost. We've got no drill, blast, haul. We've got no then producing a, a rare earth concentrate. In other words, I've got no flotation to produce a concentrate. And then that concentrate has to be cracked before you can separate it. Right. The, the gypsum, because of it's a result of phosphoric acid production, where you add sulfuric acid and heat to that phosphate slurry, that is effectively two key ingredients you add to a mineral concentrate in the rare earth space to crack it before you can separate it. So we start with a crack chemical stockpile in our phosphogypsum resources, and that gives us a, a big cost advantage. That's a head start. Yeah, gotcha. big head start. And George, when I think about China controlling, I think it's 80 or 90% of the world's rare earth production and supply chain. Is that right? Yeah, it's 60% of primary production, 90 plus percent of the downstream processing. Okay. And so, if you've got a technology which is not Chinese for extracting rare earths, that must make Rainbow strategic and potentially give you access to Uncle Sam's dollar and uh, to build an ex-China supply chain. Is that a reasonable speculation? 100% because with that um, being part of trying to develop that independent supply chain outside of China and Rainbow has stated that's, our, that's one of our goals is that we've attracted uh, the DFC from Washington, the, De the Development Finance Corporation, and they've committed $50 million of equity into the Palabora project in South Africa. Is that coming through TechMed or directly? It's, it's, it's been allocated directly in, via TechMed, but okay. it's a direct allocation. Right. And it was announced by the DFC CEO in Dubai in 19... Dubai 20... Uh, COP28, sorry, in Dubai last year. Gotcha. Okay. And that, that $50 million comes in as part of the project financing when you're ready to build, is that right? It's equity. So okay. it's based on the, on the uh, NAV of the project post our, our DFS. Okay. So it's coming in at, 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 at a sort of a real value of rainbow, you know? And, and it's based on that, that uh, MPV, as I said. And so as we look through, George, next year you're planning to finish your DFS. Uh, what should shareholders of rainbow look for the news that will drive the share price in the next year? Um, I think it's going to be a positive DFS, obviously, and that will be preempted by what I believe will be a very good number coming out of our update, uh, our PA update or, or pre-DFS final number in November this year. It'll be some positive results coming, further positive results coming out of uh, Uberaba and potentially one or two other opportunities being signed up that have approached Rainbow. Right. But more importantly, as I said, our, our successful DFS will, um, will be our final financing um, for the project, our equity financing in the second half of uh, 2025 to start construction in 2026. And I'll be in production in 27. Right. So there'll be a six year run from start to finish, from January 21 when I started working on the project to going into production, which I think is quite a fast track, as you know, for... Six years is very fast. Yeah. Well, George, uh, I know you've done it before with other, um, other companies and uh, entrepreneurial endeavors, so I'm sure you'll be successful. It sounds very exciting. Uh, thank you for coming to the Ali de Rapallo and uh, looking forward to enjoying a cocktail with you over there later. Well, thank you for having me once again. Pleasure.